What's the deal, y'all? This your man, King Eric, the media assassin, coming at y'all with another video. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button for me. So check this out, man. I was sitting back, and I was watching a lot of old WWF content, especially from 1992. But what I like to do with the network is I like to revisit certain periods that I felt that I didn't really watch or miss. But I decided to go back to 1992. And 1992 was, a, you know, quite a bizarre year. It was quite a bizarre year for the WWF. This was around the time when they was going to the steroid trial. And you notice a lot of things different. Smaller wrestlers were starting to get pushed. And the larger wrestlers from the heyday were pretty much being out of here. But I want to talk about this here. And this is probably one of the biggest mysteries, if not the biggest mystery to me. And I'm surprised wrestling fans, I don't know if they really talked about this in the past, but they didn't really dig this up. But everybody talking about Jamie Flop, Jamie Fox, right, at being a clone. Explain this shit here. The Ultimate Warrior. When the Ultimate Warrior returned in 1992, I was excited. Especially when he saved Papa Shango and, I mean, he'll hold, hold for Papa Shango and Sid. But then I look close and I'm like, hold up. Something ain't right. Number one, his hair is short. Number two, he's mad skinnier. Number three, he was wearing these singlets, these singlets. Because think about this, the Ultimate Warrior was a bodybuilder. He will always show his body. You know what I mean? Why is he wearing singlets every match? He wore it in the match with Savage. He was wearing it through his whole tension in 1992. Then on top of that, he had the feud with Papa Shango, and he throwing up and all that. I'm like, yo, the old Ultimate Warrior, he wouldn't have went down like that. This is the same Ultimate Warrior that got stuffed in the casket, and this nigga got up. This is saying Nick Ultimate Warrior that got hit in the head with a scepter by Randy Savage. He still ran out the ring and chased him. Who this nigga here getting, getting a voodoo spell put on him and he throwing up and all this green shit. Then on top of that, the, his hair was cut shorter. He was skinnier. His running to the ring wasn't as fast. This nigga ain't the Ultimate Warrior, man. The old Ultimate Warrior left in 1991 SummerSlam. And he came back in 96. That's my theory. That was the real Ultimate Warrior that came back in 1996. This nigga here was not the Ultimate Warrior in 1992. Because his, uh, his whole demeanor was different. His pec, his pecs wasn't showing like that. The promo, the cocaine like promos wasn't really that. He was talking more sensical. This nigga ain't the ultimate warrior, man. This nigga's a clone. The real ultimate warrior was in 1996 and came in WCW in 1998. But this guy right here, I'm sticking to the story. This is not the ultimate warrior. They sent the ultimate, the real ultimate warrior home. Vince fired that dude. But they, at the same time, they wanted to pop a rating. So they went ahead and got this dude. Ain't it funny how these ultimate warrior clones start popping up? Then you had the renegade and WCW. But this is my story right here. This ain't no ultimate warrior, man. You could look and tell from the eye, for the nose, for how skinnier this dude is. His run to the ring wasn't even as fast. Nah, man. This ain't no Ultimate Warrior. This is my story, and I'm sticking to it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is King Eric. Peace out.